Ready for these first A and B semi-finals where the top three will be going through to the A final and the men's double skull. You can see the crews across the lanes there and we know these lanes have been reseeded so we expect the Germans and the Croatians to be the favoured crews as we take a look here at the German crew who have been put into lane one, uh, Gruno and Kruger. Wanting to try to re-establish themselves, and we see the Croatians, the Sinkovic brothers. They were in the quad, world champions in 2013, but now they're going for it in the double. They've been quite commanding so far this year. So the British double, Collins and Walton. A younger double, fast improving. And we see the Bulgarians, Bozilov. Vasilev. Again, I think they'll be really tussling in the centre of the course with the British for that third qualifying place to make it through to the final. Got the Danes, Stefansson, Johansson. Will be disappointed to have been put out towards lane five along with the Norwegians, who were the world champions in 2013. Let's have a look here at Hoff and Borsch. World champions last year, but they haven't been able to find that kind of form again this year. And what's your reading on what's going to happen in this race, Germany. guys? Well, Croatia. Germany had a real gut buster against Britain, uh, Britain, won by something like three or four hundredths Bulgaria. of a second in the heat. So it's going to be very Denmark. tight, but Croatia will just walk away, Norway. I'm expecting, from all these crews. Attention. And they get a clean start in that flat water up towards the top end of the course where it's much more sheltered. The crews will know they're coming down here. There's a fairly strong tailwind coming down the course as they look to get up into their race pace the British here at a high rate of striking um, looking to get away and uh, we'll get a chance to see how effective that's been but as Martin said it's the Croatians who've got that early lead yeah they've absolutely blasted out of the blocks here we've got the Germans on screen there I mean what a stacked semi-final we have uh, in this event uh, and both of them look like that it's such a tough event and uh, we know that the Croatians are from their uh, world-beating quad. I mean, given the success in the double, Martin, how do you see that heading? Well, the thing is, uh, I'm talking to Damien Martin, who's the man injured just uh, before coming up to commentary. He's here. He's uh, looking relieved. He hasn't had to have a back operation because of his injury. So uh, he's just had therapy on it. He's been back in the boat for the last two or three weeks. And he said, I'm going to be back next season. And uh, we wish him well in his recovery. But... Uh, I fully expect to see the Croatians in the quad next season, even though these two guys, as you say, Sarah, have made the double their own. And uh, it's been great to watch. They dominated Lucerne. And uh, the Germans, with their traditional fast start, they will be caught by the other crews. But, uh, well, it's always great to watch Stefan Kruger in, on the right of your picture with the white cap in the stroke seat. And uh, such a great servant to the club, the Rostock Sculler, coached by Meinhard Rahn and uh, giving the Croatians a good run for their money at the moment. Well, it's a big start, isn't it, in lanes one and two from the Germans, as you say, Stefan Kruger there, with that characteristic little nod of the head on the finish, and the Croatians just easing away, looking slightly more solid. Just to check on the pace, 128.9, the world record was set in, and they went through the, one, the 500 metres in 128.08, so they're under world record pace and all four other boats here locked together and what a battle we have on uh, we've got the British there uh, who was so strong in uh, the early rounds of this regatta but the Norwegians, the world champions out in lane 6 as you said Greg, just not able to find the same form that we saw uh, that they had at the world championships last year I mean how gutting to not make the A final how do you think they're going to form in the last half of this race? Well the Norwegians pulled something out of the World Championships last year, they're going to need to pull something out very, very special here if they're going to make it into the final and I think it's going to be very difficult for them now, particularly when you see how this event is moving and just seeing we've got two races going on, one to win and be the leader into the final but the real race, let's remind ourselves here, is for third position with only three qualifying for the final, it's the British who are just looking to ease away here in the second 500 and get a little bit of a lead on the Bulgarians beside them. Yeah, I'm still looking to see if the Croatians are going to do the world's best time. I think they're going to be driven on by the Germans. 2.59 through the K, that would be the mark that we're looking for. And you can just see on the left of your screen there the British in that third place. And they go through the 1,000 metre mark. I mean, those two crews over in lane one and two, they can see what's happening here with the other four boats. Uh, 
you, you have no chance to relax, even though they've got a huge amount of clear water with four crews behind them all vying for one position into the all-important A final. You don't let up. You keep that pressure going all the way. You want as much gap between that, that race that's going to happen behind them, don't you, Greg? Well, it's an interesting thing as to whether these two might just settle for first and second, but I'm sure you know, a logical side of your brain might say that was a good idea, but the emotional side will say this is a chance to set a world best time and this is a time to put a marker down to everyone else in the field and say we're the guys who are going to win the gold medals. Yeah, and, and there's no way they will have expected to have been leading the rest of the pack by that distance, I don't think. I mean, it's interesting that maybe the lanes are that favoured, but... Uh, what a great race. You can see there in the Bulgarian, the uh, sculler to the right of your picture, Georgi Bozolov, of course. Better known for being in the single skull that the Bulgarians have put him into the double and uh, really in a big fight with the British for that third slot. Croatia moving out now. Croatia are moving out. They've got the clear water in there, but we'll see these Sinkovic brothers. As you say, Martin, they're in the double now. How keen would they be, do you think, to put down a world best time? Do you think there'll be any chance of a let-up, or do you think oh, they're going to go well, the whole way? I, I think, it, what is it, it's about 4.30. Well, the French did that world's best time in Poznan, a screaming towel in Mackay and Hardy. I remember the race in uh, 2006, and, uh, well, the wind picked up all the way down the course. It was rougher there than it is here, but we're looking for about 4.30 on the pace through the 1500. And there we see that bang on 4.30. Ooh, so it's going to be close. So they're going to need a big close. last 500, yeah, just as the Bulgarians are going to need a big last 500. And the Norwegians, the world champions, now is their moment. They're in lane six, they're not in a great position on the course. They look like they're getting themselves in the mix for that third qualifying place. And such an incredible style that the Croatians have. It, it really is reminiscent of how they row uh, the men's quad. I mean, I look at that and I can imagine the other two athletes sitting behind them. This is exactly the appearance they give it, which is uh, quite interesting when you look across at the Germans who row very, very differently and probably how I would expect a double to to look more traditionally but certainly such an effective technique and they're just so strong and they're the fastest crew on the course at the moment up over that 20 meters yeah. per second 38 strokes a minute there's no let up there. I think, I think they're strong gonna, in their bodies and they're blasting the way for it they go they go 133 i think they're going to do it just around they were 433 the french in 2006 the world's best time in poznan and these guys at 430 three seconds inside and they're just killing it aren't they we'll take a look at this just how big that lead is but you know what they've got in their mind they've got they go for the world best time uh, in a semi-final it's a fairly crazy thing to do but this is their chance to put their name in the history book so let's uh, have a look at what they can do i mean this shows their dominance nicola Braich, their coach is going to be delighted 603 is the time they're looking for Whoa, oh, sub six. That's it. wicked. That sub is six wicked. And a skull. But look how this race behind has panned out. Whoa. The Germans have gotten there, but what a push from the Bulgarians to get that third position into the A final. Absolutely gutting for Norway. Fourth. Last year's world champions missing out. The world best time falling, and they know they've done it. And the Bulgarian, look at the celebrations there from Christian uh, Vasilev, the uh, Bulgarian stroke man. The younger of the two started uh, rowing in 2008 and, uh, well, he was in the men's single 12th place in Lucerne and he's jumped now into the A final in the men's double, got through the British who have had a fantastic season but a big disappointment for the Mark Banks coach crew not to be in the A final. Now, will be a disappointment for the British, but the story here is about these men who've qualified. Bozilov, as you say, the experienced single sculler in the bag, got the Bulgarians through. Um, but look at this Croatian double, as you say, Sarah, moving so strongly, almost sculling it like it's a quad with those strong, upright bodies. Perfect for this kind of tailwind conditions. And for the first time ever, we've just seen a double go sub six minutes. Yeah, and it just puts you in mind the distance there was phenomenal. I mean, this is an Olympic class semi final, and those guys have destroyed the field, like in the same way that the New Zealand pair, Murray and Bond, do to their uh, coxless pairs of it, where the rowers only have one blade each. These guys have two blades, uh, one in each hand, so it's a slightly different type of boat and field. But uh, I can't remember seeing a, a boat dominate this event by so much as the Croatians have just done and uh, I'm just so excited that we've seen a sub six in the men's doubles. Well I remember I've sculled in plenty of quads and in plenty of quads we thought going sub six is a good performance <laughs> that we're thinking we've got to go under six minutes in a quad we're doing okay these two guys have just done it in a double in 559.72 that will go down as a new world best and make everyone train harder in that boat and we'll see what happens next 
as they qualified along with Germany and Bulgaria for the A final. I can't imagine the 